Hey, my name is Attorney Walter with Not the Third, and what we're going to be going through is something that a lot of people felt very strongly about. They got aggressive with other people in the comments section. So I'm going to go ahead and put my particular energy and ideas into this. Here's the question. You know, it's really just an assertion. Here's why a motel room converted for a disabled person is not a bad thing. A lot of you said a motel room, there's drugs throughout those places. There's bugs throughout those places. There's fleas throughout those places. Yeah, some of them that's true. Some of them that's true. But let's go through why your particular situation in life is not necessarily theirs and therefore you should consider theirs as to why they are better situated for a situation like the motel room. Number one, every disabled person is different. You have blind individuals, back problems, cardiovascular issues, heart issues, respiratory issues, lung issues, mental issues, thyroid issues. Every single disabled person is different. So when you sit there and you say, oh, that would be terrible for me, that's you. Think about any and all disabled people, physical, blind, mental. Think about all of them. Number two, their needs are not your needs. Their needs are not your needs. You might be able to go ahead and do a lot of stuff. You could even probably do some hobbies. But you couldn't do other types of things. You couldn't do certain types of hobbies as well. Just like that, these individuals, some of them might be able to swim, but they're completely and utterly mentally disabled. Remember, when it comes to their needs are not your needs, they may require medicine. They may require being close to, you know, uh, some sort of manager who can take care of them. There's all these different, they can't have stairs. They can't have ramps. There's all these different needs of these disabled individuals. Just keep that in mind. Number three, their abilities to experience freedom is not your ability to experience freedom. Okay. A lot of people said, how could you put them in a motel room? That's absolutely horrifically just terrible. Well, some of them, just so you understand, cannot afford a traditional rental agreement for a room, for a studio apartment, for a trailer. And if you have set up motel rooms where they can pay less and still have a room, then that's a good thing. So I want to talk about freedom. Right? You have this experience of freedom where you're sitting there going, well, I need acreage to look upon the vast beauty of the curvature of Earth. Okay, everybody likes that and everybody wants that. But some people don't like to be outside. Some people like to sit in a room all day long. Some people like to play video games, watch movies, sleep through the pain. Some people do not experience freedom enjoy in the same way that you might so just keep that in mind okay next thing number four some need a case manager sort of like a quasi nurse or an elderly care assistant when you have a lot of these motel room setups there's usually a program a big company that buys them that sets up for the entire facility basically a manager and the manager works with those individuals that are living there they distribute medications, they do updates on forms for them, they figure out if appeals need to be done, they hire professionals to go ahead and take care of the people in the room if something happens. They do all of these things for these individuals that renting a room would not afford them. Let me ask you this, does your landlord do anything for you at all? Well, they, you know, something breaks, they send somebody. No, no, no. Does your landlord do anything for you? Do they fill out resumes for you? Do they fill or refill your medication? Do they call the hospital or your doctors to give them an update on your current status? Do they do any of that stuff for you? Daily upkeep? Bring you something that you needed that you couldn't get? Drive you to a medical appointment? Next one. Okay, number five. Some need a neighborhood that is literally next door to immediately respond to them. 
Okay, so some people need neighbors. Some people need to be around people, interact with people. Some people need to feel like they are wanted and part of a bigger group. I'm not one of those people. I just, I, you could literally lock me in a room and I'd be fine. Okay, but a lot of people need to have social interaction to feel good about themselves. Not only that, sometimes people have emergencies. People have seizures and they need somebody nearby to know them, recognize the problem, and deal with it. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Six, some use their neighbors to have cooking parties because they buy cold food and need someone to help them make it. So let's say a disabled person's living in a motel room and they buy some food, but they can't cook it. And their neighbors have the capability to go ahead and make it. And guess what? Their neighbor is a cook that likes to cook. That's a great bond, that's a great relationship, and it allows that individual to have a better life. Now we're back to that freedom argument. What's freedom? How much freedom do they have? Not everybody can experience freedom in the same way you do. Not everybody can hop in an RTV and go into the vast mountains of Colorado. Number seven, some people, some need people with impairments like themselves to just watch TV with while knowing they both have no clue what the prior show is about. Some people need that, where they're just sitting there, enjoying the company of another person in silence. To some people, that's weird. That doesn't make any sense. But some people have that. Let me give an example. You have probably sat and watched TV with your significant other or spouse many times and did it in silence, and you didn't think it was weird. Similarly, these disabled people who cannot have a formal relationship like that can find other people that can fill in that spot. Number eight, when one bathroom breaks, they can use the one next door. This is an important one. It's often overlooked, but these motel bathrooms, especially in Florida, they break all the time. The piping is total crap. So the bottom line is, okay, where do they go? They go next door. Number nine, they all watch out for themselves. Sure, drugs happen at these places, but the people who own them are getting better at stopping it with better security. Security cameras and security systems have become significantly cheaper. That's why we're seeing a lot of people switching from the traditional news outlets over to YouTube, over to all these other types of user-oriented news. And that's because we can usually find actual video footage of what occurred on YouTube even before it hits Fox or MSNBC or CNN or any of those places. So the, the reality of this whole situation is, you know, you need to understand that people are looking for the truth. And with these types of cameras and security cameras and things like that, we can usually get the truth. And these neighbors they form a community and the more you're able to build a positive community that's anti-drug in these uh, situations in these motel rooms you've got a good situation okay and it's not hard to pick up the drug dealers they come in you know a car for two or three weeks that was rented by giving that person who owns the car drugs they constantly come in you know it's usually a certain time of the night they come in they distribute they leave they come in they distribute they leave it's the same traffic in the middle of the night it's not hard for security cameras to be set up to catch a tag and then file a complaint. Number 10. It's maximizing living space with people, and I get that it's not a 1 million acre farm to run around on, but remember, not everybody can run, and if the mental impairment claimants can go on the second floor and the physical impairment claimants can go on the first floor, then this is a win. Keep in mind, in the future which is a horrible, scary idea, they are going to have a situation where people live in tubes. Well, they sleep in them anyways, and they wake up and go into the general rooms. But think about that. Lots of tubes. Tubes, tubes. Tubes for couples. Tubes for single people. Tubes. You literally buy your tube in a building, which is where you sleep. And then you don't really own other stuff. That's just your tube. You want to clean up your tube? Get to it. The point here is this, these rooms represent a good financial option for community-based interaction 
that usually has a manager who can help them beyond just a classic landlord, and they're getting better and better at them. So before you shoot down these ideas of these motels and hotels set up for disabled people, please consider these particular bullet points. My name is Attorney Walter Ruthnoth III. I'm with Disability Resolution PA. If you have any additional questions about updated information or you want to catch me live, I'll be live 8 to 10 every Thursday, Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. Have a wonderful night. I'll catch you a little bit later. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.